uh, for the first time at SMR Latin America in Buenos Aires just three weeks ago. I had the pleasure to co-present with uh, Manuel Martinez from Mondelez and I also want to thank Libra Panels as they were, as their generosity was able to um, you know, provide the data at no cost. So I want to start out uh, by putting in context the role of promotions in general. Uh, when, you, when you think about consumers and how they make their purchase decisions, at least in the CPG world, up to 60% of those decisions are made right in front of the shelf. That's the, what we call the first moment of truth. Uh, at the same time, uh, the, or increased understanding of how uh, people make the decisions, have, we have found out that actually only 5% of the human decision making is rational. This has to do with how our brain works, system one, system two. Um, so the, the challenge is, however, is that the attention from customers, especially on the shelf, is very limited. They can be lost in context. Um, the brain basically can assimilate only a maximum of five pieces of information at once. And the other thing that happens is that consumers have certain heuristics to simplify the task. So they might start integrating or chunking information to make their, uh, their, their job simpler. And here I, I, I have some homework for you guys. Uh, we'll be sending a link uh, of this YouTube video. This is a great example of how uh, we, our, our attention as human beings is very limited. So watch this video after the, um, after the webinar is done. So in the, um, in the situation that we, we just described in which customer attention is very limited, promotions has become a very important a asset for the brands to deliver on the strategy and to recapture these customers' attention. Just to give you a few examples from real effective promotions that were launched in the past. This is a, a, a promotion from P&G. This is a, a basket uh, for Femcare pads. And they, they had like a combo there, combo, and they brought this, this little basket. This was extremely successful uh, in the market. Another one is uh, Natura. Is a, Natura is a brand in Brazil, uh, cosmetics. And what they found out is that in their, in their catalogs, they, they, their sales are mainly through catalogs. And in their catalogs, they used to have the promotions at the very end uh, of the catalogs. And then they, what they saw is that consumers would immediately go to the back of the, of the catalogs and don't even look at the, at the products in the, in the main body of the catalog. So what they did is that to, to change the behavior was to um, take some of those promotions and put them throughout the catalog, not just at the end, but throughout the catalog. And that way, the consumers were actually looking through the entire uh, information. Um, another example is what Walmart is doing, again, in Brazil. They're, they're trying to boost their, their e-commerce, their online shopping uh, channel. And for that, they have been offering free delivery um, as, as a special promotion on certain days. Um, and this has been also been very successful in boosting their their online business. An example from from Mondelez, which uh, actually came out from from some very powerful insights that they got from consumers, was this uh, promotion about uh, swapping labels or packaging for minutes in in their mobile phones. And this was especially geared towards a more uh, younger population. And it was designed to be really easy to be accessed by, by shoppers. And it was also very, very successful um, uh, for Mondays. So one thing that is important to mention is that depends on where the brand is, how the brand is positioned in the market, then the role of the promotion will be different. If you're a challenger brand who's just starting, then your promotion strategy should be geared towards increasing the penetration of the brand in the market. On the contrary, if you're a leader, then the focus of your promotional strategy should be focused on either increasing the number of visits, so increasing the, the, the frequency in which uh, consumers shop, and or increasing the average spending. 
So maybe uptrading consumers to uh, more expensive or bigger packs. And these in turn will define the objective of if you have to do uh, market research about promotions, then it's very important to know this in advance because this will have an impact on the design of the research. So lately, you know, as after you know 2008 and the crisis, uh, global crisis, it's, there's been a bit more conscious consciousness around cost efficiency and productivity has become the name of the game here in terms of promotions. It's, uh, the promotions need to improve the gross margins, need to improve profitability of, of stocks and uh, whatever promotion you do, it, it, it has to be aligned with a trade, uh, trade investment strategy. Uh, so companies need to be ever more selective in choosing what promotions to put out there in order to improve their return on investment. Now, the dark side of promotions, however, is the, the loss of promotion sensitivity whenever these are abused. And in the US, uh, it's, it's very common for many categories uh, to have maybe 50, 60, even 70 percent of the volume sold on promotion. What's happening there is that consumers are trained to buy on promotion. And that really erodes the category, erodes the revenue really erodes the business. It's a very dangerous game to play. So uh, be careful with over abusing um, promotions over time because it will lead to a lower return on investment. The other thing about promotions in, in, in the corporate world is that sometimes there's not too much information about what is effective and what is not. Sometimes the information is scattered it's incomplete, it's disaggregate in different databases or maybe in different people's minds, and sometimes it's even anecdotal. So somebody would tell you a story about how great a promotion was, but they don't have uh, really the data behind it to, to back that up. Um, so this was a part of the motivation for us at Skin to put together a study, a uh, comprehensive study for Latin America in which we uh, surveyed four different countries, Mexico, Colombia, Argentina, and Brazil, and two different product categories, breakfast cereal and laundry detergent. The, the, the choice of these con countries was to, to have a broad representation of the region, of course Mexico and Brazil being the largest ones, but also Colombia uh, representing the Andean um, cluster, and then Argentina more uh, geared towards the south cone. Um, as uh, Abby mentioned at the beginning, we tested 21 different types of promotions. Uh, the promotions were generic enough so that we could use them for both categories, so we tested the same promotions for, for both categories. And these uh, different promotions went from price reduction promotions to discounts by volume, uh, satisfaction guaranteed, uh, prices such as, you know, like in sweepstakes, coupons, rebates, bundles. We even have like a charity uh, promotion there where a certain amount of profits will be given to a, to a chatter, charitable cause. Um, and so what we did is that we created this, but then we also hired um, a, a graphic designer to help us put together the promotions in, in a graphical way, in a, in a way that was appealing to, to consumers. And here I show some examples on the screen. There are two different metrics that we use to measure the effectiveness uh, of the promotions. One is reach, which is basically what proportion of the sample or the consumers are actually, actually would consider uh, buying the promotion. Uh, and then the second is persuasion, which is, okay, among those reached, what's the level of intensity towards which they would feel uh, uh, motivated to actually buy that promotion? It's important to, met, to, to mention at this point that effectiveness is not the same as efficiency. Efficiency would, for, for an efficiency metric, we would also need cost, cost of the promotion. We did not include that here. However, you will see that we take that into account in, in some analysis that we do. 
but for the most part we're talking about the effectiveness of that promotion. So the ability to have to make a consumer switch from their existing, from their current brand to a new brand which is promoted. So here's a, a glimpse of the results. Overall this is an average across countries and across categories and I'm the first one to say that you need to be careful with averages uh, because they, they could can be misleading but this gives you a, a flavor of what the what the trend is. Uh, what you see is that overwhelmingly the promotions uh, that are geared towards certain discount, discount per volume, for example the 2 for 1 or the 3 for 2 are by far the biggest uh, the biggest promotions here in terms of impact, in terms of effectiveness. Um, you just can't argue with a, you know, with a, if you're given a product for free, you know, two for one or three for two. Now, more interestingly is, is that when you go down the line of what these other promotions did, uh, how, how these other promotions did. So you have a second group here uh, which are comprised of the promotions which gave something for free, for example, a free sample, or a free gift, which is additional to the product, or even the bundle, which is maybe not it's not given for free, but it's it's given uh, at a special discount, uh, a, a bundled product which comes in addition to to the to the cereal or to the detergent. There's a, a third group here, which are where you see the further discount by volume but not as attractive as a two for one or the three for two but here you have, you have for example buy three get twenty percent uh, or more product for the same price so twenty percent more product for the same price is actually also came very strong and then th these are followed by in orange here by the straight price discounts at twenty percent you see the three of them are here uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the differences between them uh, later on and then you have uh, certain interesting things happening. Charity came out, I mean, moderately effective. Uh, it was interesting to see that when we did a breakout among social economic levels, the lowest social economic levels, the more humble group, uh, were actually more prone to uh, to be activated by this promotion. Interesting comparisons here: a refund here in in, in purple, a refund versus a replacement. Refern is much better. And then if you think about prices, uh, an instant price is much more effective than a sweepstake uh, price. So let's move on. So of course we saw that two for one and three for two came up as, a, as the strongest ones, but that's uh, the problem with those is that these are obviously the most expensive promotions. Uh, so we try to find, okay, what are, are there any economical alternatives to buy one, get one free and three for two? So we run a turf analysis using one promotion, two promotions, three promotions, four promotions, excluding those top two promotions. Uh, I want to focus on the last uh, analysis that we did with four promotions. So if you were to choose the four most effective promotions excluding these two, then what you would get is uh, a quartet of promotions comprising, comprised by a free sample, a price discount, an uncertain promotion, which is kind of like a price, and an extra item uh, for free. Uh, and I chose four promotions because if you think about a portfolio of promotions maybe for a year, if you think one per quarter, then this could be a nice um, um, distribution of different promotions to make to make an impact on the consumers. Another thing that we were interested in, and that's why we actually tested two different uh, categories, what is whether the results are comparable or not. And what we saw is that they were very very similar. Uh, we got a correlation of 0.99 between in terms of the ranking of the promotions for both categories. We saw that there was a one big uh, outlier there, which was the free gift, and I'll explain that later. But for the rest, you see that it's very much aligned. So we concluded out coming out of that that at least for these two, and maybe for other uh, categories within the CPG arena, uh, that we can be confident that these results are transferable. Now let's let's uh, 
dig a little bit deeper with this uh, uh, gift, the gift promotion, which was the, the, diff, the big difference between the two categories. So what we saw is that the quality of the gift matters. For the detergent, we were giving a bottle of disinfectant. For the cereals, we were giving a granola bar. Uh, it could be different reasons why there was a big difference here, but perhaps uh, one thing is the size impression. Uh, so we did not disclose what was the size of the of, of any of the of the items. But of course, everybody knows what a granola bar uh, size is. The bottle of disinfectant might have looked bigger than um, you know than what it should be. So then maybe that was part of the difference. Another reason could be the, the disinfectant and the surgeon having a better match in terms of talking about a, the, the theme around cleaning as opposed to breakfast in, in the cereal and the granola bar. And then the other thing that somebody mentioned to me is that, well, it could also be that people are a little bit more skeptical to get something for free that they eat than what they put on the floor. So, you know, different reasons why this, this could be happening. So we also look into differences by countries. Um, and what we saw is that the top promotions were the, the three for two and the two for one were actually the top for all countries. But then we look at the differences for the other uh, promotions. What we saw is that Brazil was probably the, the most different, uh, had the, the, the most different profile in terms of promotion effectiveness. They were very keen on uh, on certain promotions, such as the instant prices and the sweepstakes. Um, and they really dislike the 10% the discounts. Maybe they're, um, you know, they have lost probably sensitivity to, to discounts of 10% of magnitude or less. Um, but we also saw some common themes coming across the countries. For example, free samples was a big thing, bundles, free gifts. Um, and then on the other hand, what we saw is that uh, Colombia and Brazil were more geared towards uncertain promotions, while Argentina and Mexico uh, these light, the, uh, the these uncertain promotions, price-related uh, ones. Another thing that just for the fun of it, we we kind of because we had the data by country, we kind of looked into three different kind of fun questions. One is okay, who are the most charitable of all four nationalities? Who doesn't enjoy a good, a good gamble? Uh, and who are more mathematically minded or mathematically discerning. Here are the results. In terms of um, who are the most charitable, what we look is that, is that we look at this charity promotion that we had, and so we look at the results are very close, in fact, for all countries. However, Argentina came as the uh, most keen to, uh, to purchase a promotion of, of this type. When it comes to who doesn't enjoy uh, a good gamble, uh, we look at uncertain rewards. The rewards, the, the I'm sorry, the, the promotions that had some uh, price component in it. And we saw that Brazil was a big winner, as I mentioned before, followed by Colombia, and then to a less, less extent, Argentina and Mexico. And then the last thing uh, about mathematically discerning, we saw that Brazilians were a little bit, just a little bit ahead of, of the rest of the countries. And that's why probably they, um, they really dislike the 10% discounts. Maybe they're more sensitive, maybe they're better able to, to calculate these differences. Um, another thing that we tested here is to, if you got to do a price discount, you can word it in different ways. So what is the best way to communicate a price reduction? We tested three different ways. One was an absolute saving, so save $2, for example. Another one was from to pricing, so we defined the starting point and the end point from $11 to $9, for example. And then a relative percent discount, just specifying straight out the percent of discount. What we saw is that the effectiveness really depends on three things the starting base price, the magnitude of the discount, and the currency denomination. So here's a little bit of a, of a tree uh, for you guys to understand when to use what. If the currency denominations are high, 
And this was the case for Colombia, for example, which are, you know, prices of these products are in the thousands. Then it appears that a, an absolute saving strategy would work better. Now, if they're not high, which was the case for the, the other three countries, and a certain price barrier is, is uh, crossed, so say the $10 barrier, for example, if that is crossed, then it's better to specify the from to, because then that barrier becomes very uh, evident. Another option that could work is the absolute saving uh, in, that, in that regard, but better the from to. And then if no psychological uh, barrier is crossed, then you might be better off with a relative percent discount, because you don't have a need to highlight any barrier because you didn't cross one. Another thing that came up interesting is that the uh, more for the same price, in this case 20% more product for the same price, outperform any straight percent reduction in terms of effectiveness. But there's also some added value to a promotion like this. One is a, is a more palatable financial proposition. So because you're changing the, the amount of product and not the price, a 20% increase in the, in the amount of product actually translates in a price reduction that is not 20%, it's about 18%. That's just how the math works. So you can get a little bit more bang for your buck in this case. Another thing is that you, you may be able to improve brand loyalty through an increased share of requirement because you're giving out more product. Uh, the downside is that if you, if you want to do this, this promotion, then there's probably some pack and manufacturing changes involved. That might be costly. So the other thing we did was to understand the effectiveness of the promotions under the lens of behavioral economic principles. So we coded all of these promotions in terms of 11 different principles. And I'm not going to explain them at this point. Um, but what I'm going to say is that the more of these principles apply, then the more effective the promotions are. That was one key finding that we saw. And among some of the, the key um, principles that kind of stood out in terms of boosting the effectiveness, effectiveness. The first one was priming free. So the power of free can really make people consume uh, what they would normally wouldn't do under, under normal circumstances. And Dan Ariely, uh, you know, published author, has argued, uh, you know, this point for, for years now. You know, the power of free really makes a big difference. We saw that too here. Format. So format here was interpreted as having a bigger visual impact, so offering more product, for example, uh, either by discount by volume or just literally more product in the, pro in, in the pack. That also makes a, a difference, a positive uh, impact. Uh, scepticism, the results were a bit mixed. Um, this is about where, when consumers might doubt about, for example, if they would win a certain price of this promotion or not. So whatever promotions had, uh, if the promotions, if the uncertain promotions had some kind of immediate or compelling enough reward, then that would be enough to overcome the skepticism. Uh, if not, then it would lead to subpar promotions. Um, and then the other one, uh, the last one is the prospect. Uh, prospect theory, this has to do with the, um, how uh, the asymmetry between gains and losses and, and how people tend to be loss averse. Um, so what we saw is that the, there were some promotions that shielded shoppers from a potential buyer's regret. So you don't want to buy a product and then find out it doesn't work, right? So some promotions like refunds and replacements kind of shield you against this, but they take a defensive position. They do it only after the fact, as opposed to product sampling, which gives you it's a more proactive way, which was more effective uh, than the this defensive uh, counterparts. So just the key takeaways of, uh, just to, to wrap this up, what we saw is that the most effective promotions are the discount by volumes, two for one, three for two, but that there are alternative, more economical options to those. Uh, we saw that behavioral economic principles matter. 
some of them uh, matter more than others that we explained before. And then be careful with the promotion pitfalls, the dark side that I was referring uh, before um, that could cause a loss of promotion sensitivity over time if, if you over abuse um, the, the, the promotions basically. So thank you very much for, for today's attention. And I don't know if there's any questions. Please feel free to um, to shoot. Yes, I think we have time for one question. Um, what I see here is Juan. They're asking, have you researched the role of promotions also in the context of e-commerce or online shopping? Hmm, that's that's a good question. We. Um, what we have done uh, more increasingly these, these days, these last, I would say, last two years, is that we have gotten requests from clients trying to understand what kind of, uh, not, only, not only promotional activities, but what kind of a product assortment they should have on the e-commerce channel. So it's, it's no longer the, the, the thinking that just having exactly the same products that you would have in a, in a brick and mortar store online that works. Uh, it's they're trying to think about what is the right assortment, what is the best way to visualize it, how should you show that product online on a screen, and then of course what kind of promotions are there. So we're, we're, we're running studies that are geared to understand this in the context of uh, online and, and online shopping and e-commerce. Great, thank you. I hope that answered your question. And of course if you have any other questions, please feel free to contact us. We'll, uh, we'll send our contact details around to you. And um, I want to thank everyone again for joining this webinar today. And please be sure to visit skimgroup.com forward slash webinars where you signed up um, to download this presentation and get more information about our upcoming webinars. We're also going to be doing our next one on May 9th um, where we'll be discussing why research designs matter and three pitfalls you can avoid. Um, so thank you all for coming. On behalf of Juan and myself, a thank you, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care.